It all started in 2008, when the world financial system was on the brink of total wipeout. Too much debt and too much speculation on the part of Wall Street, to put it simply, caused one of the biggest challenges to the modern economy. Lehman Brothers, an investment bank that was 158 years old, collapsed with $613 billion in debt. This led to a contagion event where one by one the dominoes started falling. Long story short, in order to backstop the system, all the governments around the world turned to a novel method of dealing with such crises. It was called quantitative easing. This weird term basically means that the central bank creates money out of thin air in order to buy government bonds, mortgages, and even in some countries corporate debt and shares in order to save the system. This increases the amount of money and juices the wheels of the economy. It also increases the value of the collateral in the system so that it can be backstopped. Imagine it like this. You have a house that has 80% mortgage on it and the bank doesn't want your debt to go above that number. So the house is 100K and your debt is 80K. That's all great until the value of your house drops to 60K. In that case, the bank will want you to put additional money in order to increase your collateral because you agreed it won't go above 80%. Now imagine you had a magic button which could now make the house go up to 110K despite the fact that it's less valuable and its real value should be 60K. Suddenly, because your debt is fixed at 80K and your house is worth 110, everything's sunshine and rainbows again. This is basically what the quantitative easing allows at scale. It increases the denominator of the assets that back the system and prevents everything from falling apart. If we check the amount of money pumped by central banks, which is seen in the increase in their balance sheet, you will understand visually what I'm talking about. Just a side note, when the central bank creates money, it buys something in the real world, which means that its balance sheet increases. This is why the increase in balance sheet is correlated to the money they create. As a response to the crisis in 2008, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet went from 900 billion to 2 trillion in a matter of months, which is more than 100% increase. In Europe, the central bank printed more than 1.5 trillion euros between 2008 and 2012 to backstop the system, also doubling the amount of money. The central banks were successful in saving the system. But something else happened. What happened was that this changed the rules of the game forever. It used to be that when depression hits, the people with cash and bonds suddenly had the advantage because they could buy assets at a great discount with their cash and had steady income from their bonds. This is no longer the case. The game changed forever. This is just a part of my video about how the rules of money and the economy have changed. To check the full version, click on the video that should have appeared on your screen right now.